plethora of delicious varieties, such as rice, crackers, pasta, and bread, just to name a few, carbs are the most common source of energy in everything from plants to humans, albeit in different forms. The two basic types are complex carbs and simple carbs. Let's start with the simpler ones, shall we? Simple carbohydrates tend to be more in sugars, which as we all know, show up in yummy stuff like cake, candy, soda, honey, cupcakes, cookies, you get the picture. However, they also occur naturally in milk and fruits. Now, some people say that simple carbohydrates are unhealthier than starches, and I'd like to dispel that myth right now. It's true that we need more complex carbohydrates in our diets, but it isn't that they are healthier. Naturally occurring simple carbohydrates are just as healthy as complex ones. It's the refined carbs, like the white sugar granules that we use in baking, that we need to look out for, as this is the stuff that gives simple carbs the reputation of bad carbs. Now the most basic simple carbohydrate is called glucose. Basically, its job is to supply the body with quick energy, so this means that it is, it is quickly and relatively easily broken down. It's naturally occurring in fruits and is even made by the body in breaking down other foods. Glucose supplies heat and energy to the body, and any that isn't used immediately is converted back to glycogen. When energy is needed, it is simply converted back to glucose. Glucose, of course, is not the only simple carbohydrate there is. A few others are fructose, which is known as fruit sugar, maltose, which is found in grains, and lactose, which is the principal carb found in milk. We won't go into too much detail with these. What's the major difference between simple carbohydrates and complex carbohydrates, you ask? They are actually surprisingly similar on a basic level. They both, for example, provide four calories per gram. However, the typical simple carbohydrate contains refined sugar, and the foods therein contain few to no essential vitamins, and because they lack them, simple carbohydrates are more likely to be converted into fat and stored. Complex carbohydrates, on the other hand, tend to be in foods rich in vitamins. They are packed with fiber, and as a result, make you feel fuller longer since they take longer to digest. Let's look at these next. When I say complex carb, by the way, I don't mean this kind. I'm referring to, of course, starches. These are the ones we tend to be more familiar with. These are oatmeal and potatoes and cereal type carbs. About 60% of our calories per day should come from carbs, as illustrated on our handy dandy pyramid, although I personally think that the old pyramid better illustrates just how much bread that really is. On a molecular level, complex carbs are just chains of sugar molecules linked together. These practically go on forever. A single complex molecule can contain up to 1,000 or more units of sugar. Here's a picture of one such molecule, although this one, as you can see, is much shorter than it could be. I think it looks like a bunch of hexagons holding hands, and that might not be a bad way to think about it, I guess. Where they're holding hands, that's where the units are linked. These long chains are called polysaccharides, as you may recall from freshman biology. Each smaller unit is called a monosaccharide. A note about polysaccharides, they don't actually just have to be straight lines. This is a picture of glycogen, which is a polysaccharide. Carbs have a tenuous relationship with the American public. Some athletes load up on protein to build muscle, letting carbohydrates fall to the wayside. Still others have bought into a little thing called the Atkins diet. Neither of these, for the average person, is healthy, nor is it very smart. Carbs were reported in 1988 by the Surgeon General to be the best alternative to fats and cholesterol. The report also goes on to say that protein intake should not be increased, as Americans already consume enough. A better approach for athletes would be to load up on carbs, a practice known as carbo-loading, to improve muscle endurance. It is actually recommended for events lasting at least 90 minutes. Another thing, diets high in carbs are sometimes recommended for diabetics, as the dietary fiber could improve their ability to process blood sugar. Now let's talk about this fiber business for a minute. It is, of course, a benefit of a diet that includes complex carbohydrates, especially those heavy in whole grains. 
Basically, fiber eases digestion, even though it can't be digested by the human body. It can be soluble and insoluble. Soluble fiber can reduce cholesterol levels and heart disease, and insoluble fiber reduces the risk of colon cancer and helps out with, you know, easing the digestion process, especially towards the end. I know you know what I'm talking about. With all these benefits, you could definitely see the downsides of a diet such as the Atkins, which peaked in popularity in 2003. While it's true that people can lose a good amount of weight quite quickly, there are downsides to a diet that cuts out most of what should make up around half your diet. The smaller problems range from tiredness, dizziness, and nausea. The longer term effects include risk of heart disease because of the high intake of fat, nutritional deficiencies from an unbalanced diet, cancer and premature aging from the lack of antioxidants, and an increased risk of osteoporosis since milk, as it contains lactose, a carbohydrate I mentioned earlier, is not allowed in earlier stages of the diet. Clearly, eating a diet with a good amount of carbs has its peaks. Food for thought, though. According to an article from the New York Times, eating excessive carbohydrates isn't healthy either. An Italian study of hospital patients found that patients consuming a lot of carbs were nearly one-third to one-half more likely to suffer from kidney cancer. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot. As much as 12 ounces of bread per day or 18 ounces of pasta. To put that in perspective, that's half a loaf of bread or more than a box of spaghetti per day. Moral of the story? Keep on eating your carbs, but remember not to overdo it. Experts recommend you keep it under a large box of manicotti per day, which I'm sure is a letdown for some people. But hey, these are the sacrifices we make for our health, right? Thank you.